Okay, we're talking uh, uh, about the Mossel Bay Era Club or hostess next. That is the position of Mossel Bay. It's about 500 kilometers east of Cape Town along the coast. Some history about Mossel Bay itself. Um, very active club, um, very nice airfield, um, restaurant, aircraft hangarage, everything on site. Next. Uh, services, this is some of the things they've done, rallies, aerobatic competitions, air shows, navigation rallies. They're a very active uh, club there who uh, welcomed us. Um, most important is the town of Mossel Bay have given their full support and they've actually spent quite a lot of money on improving the airfield. For example, the taxiway has now been tarred. Uh, the apron's been enlarged, etc., etc. So they've put quite a few uh, c a cash in, and the um, Minister of Sport also has, has approved this. So we've got the municipal approvals and the government behind us. Thanks. Okay, skip past that. That's what it looks like from the air. Um, the uh, aerobatic box will be lined up immediately with this runway and to the uh, north of that runway and I've, I went, I'll show you the actual aerobatic box on the latest line. This gives you some feel. Um, it's a bit of a dip in that runway but it's not <laughs> so uh, some hard landings in the past I think but uh, it's uh, 1.2 kilometer, uh, 1200 meters long. So no problems there. Next. More shots of, uh, try and get a feel. The clubhouse is on the right hand side there. Um, quite a nice facility, has a bar there. Next. Okay. Um, the, well, okay, clubhouse, restaurant, standard box, pass on please. Um, some of the facilities in the town itself and um, so from the bottom for any judges that get bad RI uh, <laughs> we have the shark cage <laughs> experience so uh, <laughs> be, be careful the um, it's quite interesting when pilots fly the coast is very close and when uh, they, they fly across the beach and you can see the great white sharks it's if anybody flies, they never swim. Next. What is Blue Flag Beach? Uh, Blue Flag Beach is, is basically um, approved, uh, lifesavers, all the facilities on the beach. Um, okay, the actual um, conditions, uh, the maximum fee will be 1,200 euro maximum we will not exceed it um, for yak 52 only uh, we're following the example of uh, the russians in moscow um, first three entries per era club uh, the cost of the aircraft is included including one hour's training obviously for intermediate section in the first bulletin, or maybe the second, we will make it uh, very clear what aircraft are available and the higher rates. Next. This is now the final date. We moved it just slightly. Um, when we studied the weather conditions, we felt that by moving it the three weeks from the beginning of November to the last week in November, we've uh, the weather, average weather over the last five years is far better. The average temperature is actually quite low throughout the year and we're only really expecting about 24 degrees. Uh, one thing uh, having discussed in the Bureau and looking at this from a SIVA point of view 
We don't want to be in a position where we have a competition where we're taking judges and jury all the way down to South Africa at quite a lot of cost and then we end up with 20 pilots or something like that. So what we're suggesting is we go ahead with this competition, we will issue the bulletins to all the aero clubs and we will ask people to give us an undertaking that, or an indication at least that they will send pilots to this event. And that by the 1st of July, having seen who exactly what the anticipated numbers are, that should be beginning less than 55 pilots combined, yak whack intermediate, then I think I would come back to the Bureau and say it's not viable from a SEVA point of view. All indications <coughs> are from the amount of interest we've had so far without officially announcing it is that we will meet that target or exceed it. Uh, for example, Mike Hewer has already given us, I think, six people from the USA, and might, might have been more. Uh, Canada's indicated five or six, five or six at least. Um, New Zealand are sending a team, Australia, and that's without really, I uh, know other people have indicated that they're keen to come down. So I'm quite confident that we will hit the 55, but just in case, uh, we've set that 1st of July. And please bear in mind that this date of this contest is after the next SEVA meeting. <laughs> but, uh, not that that has got much to do with it. Um, we don't want any money sent to us before the 1st of July. Uh, once it's a definite go on the indication of the numbers, we would set a limit of 1st of October for the entry fee. And anything after 1st of October would attract a 10% increase. Sorry, you're frowning at me. <laughs> yeah, six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks before the start. Yeah, should be there. You could pay them to pay six weeks before. Yes. Yeah. 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 We uh, we haven't got much to pay out uh, up front. So next. Okay. This is just uh, things we would do as hosts. Um, okay. Next. Okay, so, the, and that's the end of the slide uh, presentation. Uh, can I ask you to minimise that? Thank you. Go to the bottom. Open up uh, Google Earth. Okay. Just on, uh, and, and home in on the red part there, please. Okay, you get a good idea here, the, uh, in, a, in a bit more please. Okay, the runway is set east-west and the aerobatic box will be immediately to the north of that. And as you can see, it's in complete open ground. There's, there's nothing underneath, it's, um, it's just open fields. Um, I did this mainly to find out which judging positions we could get. The preferred position will always be to the north, looking south. The sun would always be behind us, but east and west, there's no problem with the judging positions. So, absolutely no problem there. Perhaps you'd like to go out a bit there, believe me. Where? Just zoom out. A bit more. Okay. So there you can see the relative position of the um, airfield to the actual town itself, and uh, oh, the hotel I think is located at one of the. I think it's that point there. Okay. Get rid of that. Snakes and stuff like no. that. Plenty of snakes, yes. Uh, Anti-snake repellent will be issued to the judges. 
No. Shut, get out of here. And uh, that one. Okay, this is um, a few shots of the actual hotel itself. If you could go to image, please. That's okay. Um, the, the hotel itself is on the beachfront. Um, it has a little clubhouse there. Just scan up, please. Internal swimming pool as well as external. The model, sorry, keep your eyes off. <laughs> yes, it's included, yeah. <laughs> We're uh, not promising you lobster every day, sorry. But <laughs> wedding every day. Wedding every day, if you so wish. Yeah. Okay, so I think you can see that this is actually quite a nice hotel. It's... Uh, I've stayed there two or three times myself. The rooms overlook the beach, it's very nice. Um, it's about a quarter of an hour drive from the airfield and transport will be provided. If you could go... Sorry, I'm doing this by sort of remote control, but um, one of the things... I cannot influence this. <laughs> okay, one of the uh, things... There are, there are conference facilities at this hotel, and we will consider doing the briefing every morning in the hotel. It might be better than dragging everybody to the airfield, uh, especially, God forbid, if the weather's not right. Um, but there could be pilots who are only flying in the afternoon who would like to go to the briefing and then spend the day relaxing at the hotel. So uh, we're confident it has very good facilities. I think uh, that's about it, and I'm sure there will be some questions. Judges, um, we will stick to the uh, regulations. And uh, well, <laughs> we'll take the Act 52 ones, and at the moment, no, we'll take the uh, general regulations, says uh, seven judges. If we, got, um, if we got a really good response, we'd consider going to more to the full complement. I'm going to have 52. It will be at least four, but we have something like 22 in South Africa. So we're negotiating right now on which ones will go there, which ones will be made available. And when you are talking about free, air, free uh, first entries in, air, in every team, um, the airplane brand is included, uh, do you mean free F-52 and free intermediate? We're not, if there is a team with both, uh, no, we're not talking about intermediate because um, we go back to the normal situation if people wish to hire extras and things like that. So, uh, you, by, by that you only mean Yak 52s? Correct. We will follow Yak 52 exactly. And the intermediate is there? The intermediate, even though it's run as the same event, will be, as far as aircraft hire, will be separate. Alan. Uh, the, we, <laughs> we will use an air traffic controller there uh, for the, any local traffic that will approach the airfield, but I can assure you we have priority for competition traffic on this airfield. There's no, no flight school there. There's a... There is a parachute club, but we'll try and get them out the way for the day. <laughs> for the contest, sorry. And in view of the terrain around, which looks pretty inhospitable, uh, in the event that the runway 
became inoperative when somebody was airborne, the blockage for some reason or other, and how close is the nearest available runway? There is actually a, a cross runway there. It's a dirt runway and it's been improved. But should all else really fail, 40 kilometers by road, I expect it's closer by air, is a major regional airport called George. Takes, I think, about 20 jet flights a day. Sorry, Paul. I would like to know, John, average wind. So would I. Um, <laughs> no, the um, we the average wind uh, appears to be, and it's in miles. Unfortunately, I tried to work it back, but it, it seems to be about ten meters a second or less. Okay, so I, we don't anticipate high winds. Thank you.